everyone. Welcome to my talk today where I'm going to discuss how the four pillars of advanced practice can be used to structure nurses' career progression. I'm going to give you some practical examples to help you develop core transferable skills as an early career nurse or an experienced registered nurse that reflect the four pillars, which are clinical practice, leadership and management, education and research. And these examples will be great to highlight when applying for jobs on your personal statement or when preparing for interviews. Um, just to say, I'm a UK nurse, so this, the context of this is for the UK. Hope you find the talk helpful. If you do, make sure you give me a thumbs up and do check out my other free videos on my YouTube channel. So what are the four pillars of advanced practice and where did they come from? In 1997, Kim Mamley, who was the course director for a master's in nursing at the Royal College of Nursing Institute at the time, presented a preliminary conceptual framework for advanced practice. And you need to remember that the majority of nurses at the time didn't have degrees, let alone masters. So the full reference for this paper is presented in a slide later in this talk. And Kim Mamley's framework was developed from a three year action research study to inform advanced practice and nurse consultant role, roles and her paper was ahead of its time and it promoted the nurse as an expert an educator researcher strategist role model and innovator and Kim Manley supported open non-hierarchical management and nurses supporting change management and practice development. And I remember at the time reading this paper and there was lots of discussion papers debating the conceptual framework. And this ins work inspired me to become a lecturer practitioner. So do check the paper out. So why are the four pillars useful to guide nurses' career progression and career pathways? Firstly, the four pillars that includes clinical practice, leadership, education and research, everyone understands. They're simple, they're easy to apply to nursing roles and nursing careers in any field. And if you think about the vast array of nursing roles and job titles that we have across the UK, they usually have a focus linked to clinical practice, leadership and management, education and research and evidence-based practice in job development descriptions, for example. One of those four pillars may dominate, for example, if you're a nurse educator, but you will also lead a team, um, lead project work. As a nurse educator, you would review an evidence base and research informs your teaching. You have special specialist clinical practical skills to be able to teach in that field and you deliver education programs, maybe following the completion of a teaching certificate, for example. So they are interrelated in roles. Um, I often have conversations with early career nurses using these four pillars as a structure to discuss their future career progression and how to develop key transferable clinical skills, leadership skills, educational skills and research skills. It's interesting to note that the Scottish Flying Start programme reflects the four pillars model as a programme. It's made up of four units. And um, the Flying Start National Development Programme is for all newly qualified nurse, newly registered nurses, midwives and allied health professionals in Scotland during their first year of practice. So it shows how the four pillars is a great basis on which to have those career conversations. So although this talk is focusing on any nurse's career progression, just to say if you are aspiring to become an advanced nurse practitioner or an advanced clinical practitioner in the future, um, it's interesting to note that the NMC is exploring regulating advanced practice and they aim to approve new standards for advanced practice by 2025. There's currently consultations going on. There's advanced level nursing practice competencies that are country specific across the UK four nations. You can check them out on your specific NHS websites. Health Education England, where I work in England, has established a centre for advancing practice and they have a very helpful website and resources so look out for updates on their website. Health Education England is accrediting advanced practice programmes according to standards set out in their multi-professional framework for advanced clinical practice in England and if you aspire to become an advanced level practitioner you need to check out check that you're on the right course also look out for trainee advanced practitioner roles that are advertised by employers as um, the master's accredited courses and programmes are usually paid for. And there's also an e-portfolio route for those practitioners who already work at that level, who completed their advanced practice courses before 2017. So do check out those NHS websites for more details. 
If any of you are interested, I've got some helpful videos on my YouTube channel, how to become a UK specialist nurse or advanced nurse practitioner, the four pillars of advanced practice. Um, if you do apply for a trainee advanced nurse practitioner or a trainee advanced clinical practitioner, I have interview tips and also um, a presentation on how to prepare a presentation for a nursing interview. So now moving on to some practical ways to develop key transferable skills and progress your nursing career that's underpinned by the four pillars of advanced practice. The first of the four pillars is advanced clinical practice and whatever level of nurse you are, you're aiming to increase your knowledge, skills and competence in your day to day practice throughout your career. And you do this through experiential learning, through practicing core skills, receiving feedback on your practice. We do it through reflection and through professional development and training and also academic courses. You should access support and feedback through clinical supervision, professional development reviews and appraisals. And you need to be open to peer review and seek feedback from others throughout your career. Nursing's about lifelong learning, learning from feedback and also challenges. And it's through self-reflection and reflection with others that we achieve that. Access post-registration study days and training course courses for your skills development. And these training courses and study days may not be academically credited, um, but there may be some that are academically credited and specialist postgraduate and master's level academic courses relating to your specialist area. Specialist academic courses are much more likely to be paid for by employers if they align to your current role, your professional development, and you can demonstrate how you're going to support the service and from your increased knowledge and your skills. So, for example, if you want your employer to support a teaching course, it's important that you start early on networking with educators, supporting teaching in your clinical service. Um, you might support students or newly registered nurses um, or healthcare assistant support workers before you ask for the course fees. And then you've got a stronger case for justifying that course and how it will influence and impact on that service if you complete the course. The next pillar is leadership and nurses develop their leadership skills whilst leading patient care, nursing teams or projects. Firstly, it's helpful to reflect on your interests and how you can develop your leadership and managerial skills in your role with your line manager. Whatever your interest, you can start by developing leadership knowledge and skills through supporting your line manager and um, experienced nurses and allied health professions wherever you work. Network with your local leadership team. A great way to start is by assisting with service evaluations or audits. Attend clinical governance meetings. Um, if you've got an interest in education, link with educators. It depends what your interest is in. Um, when we learn from instant reports, we may need to educate staff after, but identifying key service priorities and areas that need support, leading, addressing, where you may utilise your leadership skills. You might want to focus more on um, service user experiences, support, patient information, health information, health education or promotion. It very much depends on your interest. Um, there may be an aspect of clinical care or patient care that you are very interested in and you want to increase awareness about an aspect of care as well. Leading projects in your current role, it's helpful to start by observing, supporting and collaborating first to learn from others, network and develop those leadership skills. So you might want to shadow leaders um, locally or nationally, then you might start to feel confident enough to then start leading a change in practice or a service or quality improvement project um, to improve patient care or staff experiences. It depends what you're interested in. It's helpful to network with local leads, quality improvement hubs and quality improvement leads if you're interested in change management and quality improvement. Are there any leadership training days? Are there any courses locally or postgraduate master's level leadership courses you might be offered? within your um, institution where you might often on um, leadership courses you complete work-based learning you might have a quality improvement or change management project um, as part of your course assessment or writing a research proposal or um, 
a change proposal. A great website to look at leadership courses and resources is nationally is the NHS Leadership Academy that recommends leadership courses according to your experience. So there's courses to suit early career nurses to senior nurse leaders. And it's also helpful to link with local and national leadership forums. The Royal College of Nursing has a nurses in management and leadership forum, which is great to, you know, to join. And there are also opportunities to apply for leadership scholarships that enable you to attend leadership courses, um, complete leadership projects. So, so for example, we've got the Florence Nightingale Foundation Leadership Scholarship. And I recently saw that they were advertising a really interesting scholarship, a digital leader scholarship. You've got the Burdett Trust for Nursing grant programmes or the Foundation of Nursing Studies Inspire Improvement Fellowships, again, aimed at developing leadership skills. And these bursaries and scholarships enable you to have paid time to develop those skills. If you're interested, I have a whole playlist on leadership in nursing on my YouTube channel and all my videos are free if you're interested. So some examples, developing leadership skills, and I talk about different leadership styles with some practical application, quality improvement, service improvement, using the PDSA plan, do, study, act cycle, um, decision making, service evaluation, etc. So do check that playlist out if you're interested. The next pillar is education and all nurses teach, educate other staff or patients or service users in our role. So education is embedded in nursing, our nursing profession. So look at teaching and educating in practice. We support all levels of staff. So if you're an early career nurse, you might want to support students, trainee nursing associates, be a link nurse for, for um, newly registered nurses or students. You may want to offer to lead welcomes um, for students or trainee nursing associates to support preceptorship or healthcare assistance with their care certificate you can act as a practice supervisor or practice assessor to support others to complete their competencies proficiencies you should also direct your own learning and you might wish to go on and complete practice supervisor assessor course attend conferences and study days bringing back what you've learned from conferences and from your own education and you can feedback in a lunchtime teaching session use an education board communication board you might want to create some resources up-to-date resources and flyers um, or use some digital technology to have a document store of resources you can complete a teaching certificate if you're very interested in teaching, teaching certificate or postgraduate diploma in education to extend your teaching and presentation skills. And that's useful for any role, but particularly if you're going to go down an educational career pathway. You might want to act as a link nurse, a super clinical supervisor. In England, we have the professional nurse advocate role um, where you complete a professional nurse advocate program to be able to deliver training and it links to restorative supervision for colleagues and that's something that's taking place in England currently. Um, linking with education teams, helping to orientate, teach and support staff or service use users in whatever field that you work. Um, you, um, yes, yeah, so that's, I think that's about it on that one. If any of you are interested in education, I've got a whole playlist on nurse education on my YouTube channel with videos such as clinical supervision for nurses. I go through all the different types of clinical supervision, preceptorship for nurses, ways to welcome student nurses and nursing associates to placement. That's very important and which post registration nursing courses to choose. So loads of other videos on there as well. So moving on to research, if you're a registered nurse, you already have started engaging in research activity as a graduate in nursing. So you've been taught how to critically appraise literature to inform an in evidence base. You'll have conducted literature reviews on modules and during your course. And most of you will have completed a dissertation. 
um, so you've, you've engaged with research activity and promoted evidence based practice already. There may be other ways you can integrate research and promote evidence based practice as a nurse. So, for example, you can promote safe evidence based practice just by monitoring good practice and quality standards and challenging poor practice where you work. You can educate others when you see poor practice so that you adhere to that evidence base. You can see here that the pillars of education and research can be interlinked and other pillars may be interlinked as well. Um, you can also contribute to local and national policy development and research. I'm often seeing national surveys and forums asking for nurses to inform future standards and policies. You might want to join a local or national research group, find out who your research lead is where you work. Um, and what opportunities there are to develop those research skills. So you can observe and shadow researchers and, and look at research as a potential career pathway. You might want to look at a clinical academic career pathway where you're in clinical practice, but also you've got part of your role embedded in clinical practice and part um, conducting some research. So um, you might want to do a literature review prior to writing a research proposal that then leads on to a research project. So starting by observing, collaborating before leading projects is very helpful. Attending any early career research training opportunities and conference days, they might be offered locally or nationally. Um, your local university may be linking with um, academics in wherever you work as well. So look out for university opportunities and open days as well. Look out for research scholarships, bursaries and fellowships. So similar to leadership scholarships, there will be some linked to research and networking with local and national research networks and leads will help you find out where those opportunities are. And I've got a video that offers more advice on clinical academic careers and details of where to look for scholarships. So I've got some helpful videos on my YouTube channel linked to research and quality improvement and change management, but um, different research nurse roles and how to become a nurse researcher video talks about clinical academic careers, talks through what the difference is between a scholarship, fellowship, for example, bursaries, and also indicates some key national um, institutions that you can link to for some of these scholarships and bursaries. So I hope you find that helpful. So in summary, there are five key tips to help you progress your nursing career that have been discussed under each of these four pillars. The first is to re keep reflecting on your practice. The second is learn from feedback from others. The third is access support and supervision. The fourth is access professional and academic opportunities available to you. And the fifth is to network locally and nationally. So if you're interested in Kim Manley's conceptual framework for advanced practice, I have the reference here. And um, I hope you found this talk helpful. Do give me a thumbs up in YouTube if you did. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the YouTube comments. If you'd rather DM me privately, just DM me on Twitter or my website. Do check out my other videos. Good luck with your career progression. And if you um, would like to buy any of my books, the links are in the YouTube description.